Welcome to the Soil Mechanics Movies of Delft University of Technology. My name is Phil Varden, and today I'm going to talk about lateral stresses. Most of which we've seen before is all about vertical stresses. Typically, vertical stresses come about due to the weight of the soil, so gravity acts on the soil, and then we have resulting vertical stresses. We also normally look at what happens if we get additional vertical loads on the soil, and then we get additional vertical deformations. Let's have a little look at this to start with. So we have a typical body of soil here. We have three layers of soil. We add some sort of vertical load onto the soil, in this case a house, and our soil mainly deforms vertically. What you can also see in this case is we have non-straight deformations, and that means that there'll also be some horizontal stresses changing in the soil. So if we take a small element of this soil, we can characterize here as having vertical stresses and also having some sort of horizontal stress. What we observe in practice is these stresses are often related. So as we go deeper into the soil, the vertical stresses increase, but also the horizontal stresses increase. So if we apply, again, an additional load, there'll be some extra vertical stresses, and this increases the vertical stresses on both sides of this soil element to stay in equilibrium but the extra load will also create an extra horizontal stress. And this is something we're going to discuss in this movie. So what we're going to do is introduce the coefficient of lateral earth pressure, which is called K in this case, and that relates the vertical stresses to the horizontal stresses in the ground. We'll come back to this a little bit later in this video, and we'll look at how we can calculate the maximum and minimum values of this K. So lateral stresses, are important in geotechnical engineering. Probably the most famous example is the Tower of Pisa. What we also often do in construction is we want to change the elevation of the ground and we want to put in retaining structures, as can be seen here. Often during construction, we also want to install temporary works and it could be for in sheet piles such as this. What we want to do is look at what happens that can make these structures fail. OK, so let's have a look at the limits of these stresses. If you can imagine a bridge going over some sort of gap, such as shown here, and you've got some sort of rock or soil on both sides, you might have a sunny day which heats up the metal bridge. It tries to expand, and it wants to push the, 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 the soil away from it. And this is what is known as a passive earth situation. And this is when the soil is passive and a structure or something else is pushing onto this soil. On the same site, of course, you might have an overcast day. And in this case, the bridge is trying to shrink and the soil is trying to push onto the structure. And this is what's called an active earth pressure situation. And it's when the soil is actively pushing onto a structure. OK, so let's look at this in a bit more detail. So when we have a failure, we have the limits of these situations. So we're talking about the limits, not the general situation we find. What I've drawn here is a sketch of the passive earth pressure situation. So on the left hand side, we have a wall which is pushing into the soil. We have this triangular block of soil failing, and we also have another portion of the soil that remains in place. One of the most important observations, and we'll see it back in theory later, is the size of this triangle. And this can be characterized by this angle alpha here, which is 45 degrees minus the friction angle, which is a soil property, divided by two. And what you can see is as this wall continues to push, this triangle of soil moves up and away from the rest of the soil. And it slides along the angle defined by alpha. In this case, what we can see is that the horizontal stresses will be much larger than the vertical stresses. We can look at this in a Moore's circle and a Moore Coulomb failure envelope. And this is defined by the friction angle, which we see here. And we also have the intercept on this tau sigma plot, which is the cohesion. So let's draw a Moore's circle. The horizontal stress in this case is larger than the vertical stress. And as the horizontal stress increases, so as the wall is pushing against the soil, the Moore's circle starts to touch the Moore Coulomb failure envelope. 
And as you can see, as it touches here is what's defined as failure. So if we use trigonometry, we can draw a right angle triangle intercepting with the center of the circle and where the Moore's circle and the Moore Coulomb failure interact, we can calculate various parts of this circle. So if we calculate the sine of phi, which is the opposite over the hypotenuse, we use this trigonometry and we end up with uh, an expression for the horizontal stress simply in terms of the vertical stress times a trigonometric function, and we call this the passive earth pressure coefficient, plus another aspect, the second aspect of the bottom equation, which is related to the cohesion times by the square root of kp. So this gives us the final equation where horizontal stresses are defined as a function of vertical stresses. Okay, if we look at this over the depth of the soil, so over the soil profile, we have an axis here of depth on the y-axis and horizontal stress on the x-axis. We see that we initially have some horizontal stress at the surface, which is due to the cohesion component of the equation, the second component, and this increases over the depth due to the first term, and that's kp times the vertical stress. Okay, if we now look at the active earth pressure situation, and this is where the wall is moving away from the soil, so the soil is pushing on the wall, we see that the angle that's defined by the failure wedge and the soil that remains is a much bigger angle, and we end up with a much smaller triangle of soil. And as the wall continues to move away, this triangle of soil moves down and causes a failure. So in this situation, the horizontal stress is much smaller than the vertical stress. So if we look at this on a Moore's circle, the horizontal stress is smaller than the vertical stress, and again as it reduces and moves to the left-hand side, you get a failure once it touches the Moore Coulomb failure envelope. And if we do the same exercise with trigonometry, we end up with the horizontal stress expressed almost in the same way as before, but we have a negative component due to the cohesion, and we have a much smaller Ka value instead of a Kp. So Ka has 1 minus sine phi over 1 plus sine phi, which is the inverse of kp, and therefore is also much smaller than kp. OK, if we again look over this depth profile, so again we have depth on the y-axis and the horizontal stress on the x-axis, we see that the horizontal stress initially near the surface is again due to the cohesion, but is negative, and that means there's tension in the soil. We again have an increase over depth, but at a much lower rate than in the passive case. And what we notice in all practical cases, soil doesn't support well tension, so to make sure we're conservative in design, we remove the tension component. So let's have a look at these together on a Moore's circle and with a Moore Coulomb failure envelope. If we have a vertical stress in the soil and we have the passive case, we increase the horizontal stress and we have a Moore Coulomb failure circle which fails as the circle touches the Moore Coulomb failure envelope. If we look at the active case, we reduce the horizontal stress until the circle intersects with the failure envelope and again we have a failure. So let's look at what happens again in our bridge situation. So we have this bridge which is expanding, pushing the soil structure, so our soil is passive, and our K increases and becomes large. If we have a bridge which is shrinking, we have an active situation where the soil is pushing a structure, K decreases and becomes much smaller. And if we look at how we can calculate these limits from our friction angle and from our cohesion, and our active earth pressure coefficients, we can calculate the limits of this stress. So this is the end of this short movie about lateral stresses. Uh, for more movies on soil mechanics, please see our YouTube account. Thank you very much.